Hi, I'm David Fogarty and I'm the climate change correspondent for The Straits Times and I'm here at COP27 in Egypt. Now, COP27 is the largest annual climate conference. It brings delegates from nearly 200 nations, from business, civil society and media. So what really happens here is critical for global action on climate change. Good morning, welcome. Am I meeting you here? Yes. Today we're following Grace Fu, Minister for Sustainability and the Environment. We're tracking her very busy schedule. She has lots of bilateral meetings. She's delivering the national statement today. So we really want to give you a sense of just how busy ministers can be. The Minister's Day starts with the AOSIS meeting, or Alliance of Small Island States. Ms Fu says that it is important to meet delegates to discuss common issues, disagreements, as well as presenting Singapore's national interests. As I walk with the Minister, I discover she walks really fast. And her top tip for getting around huge climate conferences is always to wear comfortable shoes. This is really a survival tool because there's so much walking from venue to venue and um, even in the negotiation track, we are moving in and out of rooms quite frequently. So I think you must really not hurt your legs too much. <laughs> there are plenty of bilateral meetings like this throughout the conference. This closed-door meeting with Mongolia, for example, will particularly focus on the interest in developing a carbon credit system. Now, with that meeting done, it's time to head to the next stop. At the Ghana Pavilion, the Minister confirms reaching an agreement on the trade of carbon offsets between both nations. This is the first such agreement concluded by Singapore and the first with an African nation. Today I just um, packed a hard boiled egg, some cheeses and some salads for pita bread, with my pita bread. We are usually moving around and you can never tell with time. So just in case we do not have enough time to come back to the pavilion, we, we have been having a sort of takeaway. So how do you cope day to day with the stress of going to a climate cop, going in, racing in between meetings, um, not, I, have, not enough yeah, time you, to you, eat? We and... really just have to have a mindset that plans do, do change and sometimes discussions take longer uh, than it's supposed to and sometimes your meeting date doesn't show up. <laughs> Right. So, roll with the punches, go as we go, and we just have to, you know, adjust and cope with it, yeah. Before heading to the plenary hall to deliver the national statement, Miss Fu uses the extra time to perfect her speech. Just making sure that, you know, I can get the words correct and uh, try to, as much as possible, get the pace correct because very often it's about getting the emphasis at the right place and not tripping yourself up. <laughs> Three minutes and 30 should be okay now. Singapore calls for commitment, implementation and partnerships for decisive global action in this decade to keep 1.5 degree within reach. It's the most important three minutes uh, of COP27 because this is a time for us to register our national position, our formal position with UNFCCC. And I think this year it's really important for us to call for action because there's so many issues, pressing issues that's distracting us from climate change. I just want to emphasize again the importance of climate action. Our day continues at the US Pavilion. The minister gives a speech setting out the urgency of clean energy investment and Singapore's efforts to cut emissions and collaborate with regional partners. Excuse me. This meeting is strictly confidential, so we're just going to have to wait outside as the sun starts to set, casting a nice warm glow across the conference. We head back to the Singapore Pavilion, where youths, NGOs and corporates gather in a circle for a discussion with the Minister, as our day comes to an end. So how was your, your day? What was the, what was the highlight? It's been uh, quite the packed day. Ah. Um, I think the highlights are quite a few. National statement will definitely be one. 
but um, I'm also quite happy that I've been able to witness uh, the agreements with Ghana uh, and also to signal support for um, US Net Zero World Initiative. Um, because these are all important um, positions that uh, emphasize our, our you know, support for the Alliance. Because climate action is not just um, COP, it's also about getting like-minded um, allies to work on areas that um, we're able to find common interests and we have um, you know, resources that we can share with each other. And is your day done now or you're going to have dinner or you're going to meet, have more meetings? Or? Yes, no, I think it is done now. I'm going to go back and I'm going to work on all the emails that's <laughs> piling up. Right, so the day really isn't done, is <laughs> no, it? No, 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 there's still a lot because I've been away the whole day. You can, you're going to go for a late night walk perhaps to relax or...? Uh... Maybe not, I have clocked uh, 12,000 steps already today. <laughs> <laughs> that okay. should be enough. That should be enough. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, I really enjoyed it. Thanks, David. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Yeah. Okay.